Dave with Taboo Customs. In this video today, we are going to be talking about and replacing a clock spring in this 98 TJ behind me. Now, some of these symptoms you might see that might mean that you need to replace your clock spring would be that if you're putting your turn signal on, making your turn, your turn signal does not shut itself off. There's a good chance your clock spring is to blame for that. Uh, also, specifically in this Jeep along with the turn signal, an airbag light coming on, meaning that it's not making connection with that airbag in the steering wheel, or if your cruise, if you have cruise in the wheel and it's not working, all of those pass through the clock spring, so there's a very good chance that your clock spring is to blame. So before we get to starting to tear the original clock spring out, let's take a look at the new clock spring. So be sure to watch until the end, because at the end of this video, we will actually take our old clock spring apart and we will show you why it failed. Chances are that's why a lot of them are failing. So watch till the end and, uh, and you'll be able to see that. All right, so we are using a Crown Automotive uh, clock spring. Now, this is a clock spring for a cruise control since this Jeep does have cruise. Now, we do have these clock springs available on our website. So you can visit tabucustoms.com if you'd like to purchase one of these clock springs. Uh, and taking a look at it, you can see you know, uh, if you've dealt with clock springs, looks like a normal clock spring. You can see these small tabs here that sometimes will, but uh, we have seen those break off. The three connectors, because we do have crews on this, and then the connectors back here where we'll plug in the connectors on the column uh, to the clock spring whenever we replace it. So now let's start taking a look at removing our clock spring in our Jeep. All right, so the first thing we did before we're going to even start working on this is we did disconnect the negative ground cable in our battery. We're going to be messing with electronics. Anytime you're doing that, you typically want to disconnect that ground cable just so you don't short something in and out. And especially if you're going to be working on uh, something that involves the airbag. God forbid you have an airbag go off in your face. Never good no matter what circumstance you're in. So, of course, the first thing we are going to have to do is we are going to have to take the airbag off. So to do this, there are two bolts on the back here that retain the airbag, one on each side. They are an eight millimeter bolt. Pretty easy to get to with a socket and a small extension makes it pretty easy work. Okay, so with the bolts out, we can now go ahead, pull out the airbag and there's two connectors that we have to pull off the airbag. On the bottom is a spade connector and you don't want to force this one apart. There's actually a little lever on it that you just need to push down and it'll come apart really easily. Um, or, you know, there's a lot of people probably going to have struggle with that. See it's a spade and just use force. There's just a little, little button there. Just push it, pops right apart. This other one here should just pop straight up. We'll take a small screwdriver and just pop it out of there. And now we have the airbag free and we can set it aside. You can see here the other connector that we have to take off is this green connector. Um, pretty simple. You can see the tab and the little finger that goes under it. So you just lift up the tab. Try not to break it and pull it out so we've actually already disconnected the clock spring because the clock spring is actually right here behind the steering wheel. <clears throat> so the next step we'll need to do is we are going to need to take the steering wheel off so we're going to need a steering wheel puller. Okay so before we can pull the steering wheel we'll have to take the nut off of the center. It's a 21 millimeter uh, socket and uh, we're just going to grab that with our impact make it easy Ooh, try not to lose the nut set it aside and then we will get our steering wheel puller now unfortunately I don't know what these uh, threads are for the holes one thing you will have to do is you, this green connector is in one of the holes so you just have to pop that out my guess is because uh, we have a kit for our steering wheel puller and this has a bunch of bolts in it um, these are metric holes because 8.8 on the bolt, so I'm assuming it's probably a 10 millimeter bolt, but don't quote me on that. 
Anyway, we get our puller in place here. Now the steering wheel is only about a quarter inch or so thick, so we just want to make sure that these bolts go all the way through, engage as many threads as possible. Uh, if they don't thread in easily, you're going to need to grab a wrench or a socket. Um, you do want to make sure that they're even, so you can keep the um, keep the puller centered on the steering wheel. And usually, with a decent puller, they come off pretty easily. You gotta pull those wires through, so just be careful of those. And then, voila. The next part, we need to get these covers off. So the first thing we're gonna have to do, though, is we're gonna have to take this bottom piece off because there's a screw down here that we're not gonna be able to get to without taking this off. Now, these screws might be Torx. Uh, ours are Phillips because often people will take this off, lose the screws, and then replace them with whatever. So you pull the two screws. You have to pull it over the headlight knob there, and it should just pull right off. The bottom has tabs, so pull from the top. When we put it back in, we'll do it in reverse. We'll put it in the bottom first. Then push it up. Now you should be able to get by without having to remove the uh, the plate down here to get into the screw that holds this back in. You may though have to replace, remove this plate if you do. If you do, it's really just similar to the um, to the cover. You've got a few screws here. You've actually got four that hold that on. Um, normally they're a, a hex with a Phillips inside, but again. Who knows what they could be because people change stuff all the time. Now ours, however, someone has messed up that screw or just not put it back in the back. So it's already gone. We'll have to see when we get it off. So for this now, we've got to remove two more screws up here at the front. Now for the screws, all three, you're going to need a long Phillips bit. Now again, hopefully they're Phillips. Uh, the stock screws, I believe, are Phillips but you might not have it. So you'll want to go in there and check and make sure that your Phillips has a good bite before going in there. And you could use a screwdriver. It might be a little safer, but we'll try to go a little faster here. So do that one, do this one. and unscrew those two. With them unscrewed, the bottom will just fall off. Make sure you don't lose the two screws. Then the top can be a little trickier because to get it off, you have to go around the uh, tilt mechanism and kind of pull up on it. So now that we've got this off, we can start to look at the next steps to remove clock spring. All right, so now pulling the actual clock spring out. So if we look at the new clock spring, you can see on the back, away from the wires, that there's two tabs here. And those tabs have to come out now. Since we're pretty certain this clock spring is no good, I'm not really worried about the tabs, so I'm just going to kind of pop it out. And those tabs 
well, top tab basically broke off, making it a little bit easier to get it out. If not, it can kind of really be a pain to get in there. You can get in here and kind of pull back to get it out, and then the bottom you can pull out. Um, one thing, and like I just noticed here, there's a lot of dirt down in here. Here you can see there's a little arm that gets hit as the turn signal resets. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can see it, but it actually will move if you move in there. So if you look in there, if that little piece is gone or broken, then that can also be one of the reasons why your turn signals are resetting. So now we need to undo the two connectors from the back of the clock spring. Just pull back on the tab on the yellow one, pop it out on the white one, same thing, pop it out drop it throw it do whatever you want with the old one so now we can start installing the new one and we'll just go in reverse order installing the white connector it's all the way in the yellow connector and then I'm actually going to go and get some things to clean up because there's what happens is a lot of crud just falls down inside of the steering column so you can have a lot of stuff in there and then also another reason they can fail is that it rains and then anything that goes in there kind of goes right into the clock spring so let me go get some stuff get this cleaned up first okay so we're all cleaned up ready to start reinstalling um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that the turn signal is basically in the center position i'm going to make sure that the new clock spring is basically straight up and down Essentially an overabundance of caution, just putting everything back together. Because this is plastic, it is easy to break, so you have to be careful with that. So, also you have to be careful that as you pull this out and slide it over the shaft, these connectors down here, if the, the tab isn't really good or it's broken off, that they don't come out. So, we'll slide it over. Obviously, we'll need to put the two tabs in the holes and then pop it in. Now once that is popped in, again double check your connectors on the back, then this little piece here at the top, there's a T, I should have mentioned before, don't remove that. Don't remove it until this point. Uh, that makes sure that everything stays in alignment until you get it here. Now you can pull that out and pitch it. So essentially, our clock spring is replaced. Now we've got to just go in reverse order, put our steering wheel back on, uh, put our shrouds back on, and uh, test it out and see if it works. So first step is gonna be our shrouds again. Grab those. And... So the one thing with the shrouds is there's a lot of little teeth that go inside. And the top and the bottom one you have to make sure that all those are in the right space, right place. Seems like one is always sticking out somewhere. Then go ahead and put our two screws back in. If they'll stay in there. Now, for reinstalling this, as I mentioned, put it in the bottom first, push it up. It helps to have the column all the way up so that this rubber piece will go around the column easier. Push it around that, push it over. The uh, headlights, and then put our two screws back in. And now it's on to the steering wheel. All right, 
so for a steering wheel, another thing I maybe should have mentioned at the beginning, make sure when you start this your wheels are straight. That way when you go to put your steering wheel back on, you can align your steering wheel. So luckily, obviously ours are straight because we just pulled it straight into the shop. So feed the wires through the steering wheel. And then put the steering wheel onto the shaft. There. So next is obviously the nut to hold the steering wheel on. The one single nut to hold the steering wheel on. So pretty important. We do use a little bit of thread locker on here, not sure if it's really recommended in the field service manual, but we do because obviously there's one nut. Now, and this nut is torqued to 40 foot pounds. So we're gonna go ahead, and put that on there. Grab our sockets. Tighten it down with this one. All right, there we go. So now that we have the steering wheel on, we go ahead and reconnect our green wire, put it back in the hole, and we can start putting our, oh, that's nice. You see that cruise is broken. I don't know if we broke it or if it's like that. So now we can also start putting our airbag back in. So the large center connector just pushes in and then the spade connector push together and then make sure you cover it with the little plastic sleeve so that's done put that back in there then reinstall the two small bolts in the back Now that we've got that done, we can reconnect the battery, test it out, see what we've got. All right, time to see if everything has worked out. Horn works, good sign. Cruise goes on and off. Airbag light is now off, so it does look like we have uh, fixed most of our problems. We'll have to take it out, try it out for the, uh, the turn signals, make sure those work. But uh, anyway, like uh, it worked out all right so since we're interested to see what uh, might have happened to the clock screen we're gonna try to take it apart um, the issue though is that this has small Torx bolts around the outside which looks like they're probably at least like a t5 smallest I have is a t10 I don't I couldn't find anything to fit those torque bolts uh, that, that small so we're gonna take it apart the uh, less graceful way so we'll take it apart with some screwdrivers and pliers hopefully we get it apart if not i may take a hammer to it so let's see what we can do
All right, so I think we can see what must have happened. And I noticed when I took the steering wheel off, there was a lot of these little white pieces underneath the steering wheel. And that's actually pieces of this ribbon that had flaked off. And just with age, you can see how much dirt is down in there from years of, uh, of use. And then up here where it looks like it was supposed to be connected to the, the center, you know, so it could pass all of the, uh, you know, the wires, you know, back and forth through this, it just disintegrated and came apart. And in a couple places it has uh, broken, which uh, is probably typical for older clock springs. But here you can kind of see it's basically just a ribbon wrapped up inside that is connected to the connectors here, connected to the centerpiece, and as you turn, the ribbon just tightens and loosens. So, so there you have it. Our clock spring is replaced. We even took a look at the old one, showed you why uh, it failed, where it pulled apart from the ribbon. And, uh, you know, so hopefully this has helped you to uh, get yours replaced. If you have any questions or comments or you're looking for some of our products, you can find them on tabucustoms.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook or Instagram if you have any questions or want to see what we're up to. So, as always, thanks for watching and a like or subscribe is greatly appreciated.